I don't know how long the Lions can keep going under the radar when it comes to the national media. Hello everyone, my name is Derek and welcome back to Detroit Lions Syndicate. You already know what we do on this channel. We talk all things about your favorite team, the Detroit Lions. So subscribe to the YouTube channel and become part of the syndicate. If you want to be notified of videos, you can hit that notification bell as well. Our team has been getting a lot of attention over the past couple of months with the city hosting the draft in two years, the announcement coming the same day that it was announced that the Lions would be this year's team featured on the preseason Hard Knocks. And we've been saying this for years, specifically me. I have been talking about the NFL narrative, whether you believe it or not, is shifting toward our team. And I said on my other channel that if Matthew Stafford won the Super Bowl, that Detroit's rise would be sooner than later. See, I believe that this city had to be ripped down. It had to be ripped down to the studs and then built from the ground up. The Lions have never had a proper foundation, really, if you think about it. We've never had a proper foundation. We've never really built through the draft. We'll do some things in the draft, then we'll go out and we'll snag a bunch of free agents. When Patricia got here in 2018, one of the first major things he did was bring in Trey Flowers, a seven and a half sack guy, paid him $90 million, and he never got beyond that seven and a half sacks. When Patricia's regime was over, we had 18 former New England Patriots on this team. He tried to make this team the New England Patriots. There was a joke about the Detroit Rams going around during Matthew Stafford's Super Bowl run, but it was a joke before that about the Detroit Patriots. Matt Patricia was trying to be a replica of his mentor, Bill Belichick, and it didn't work. It never does. Whenever you try to be like somebody else, it never works. We don't have any primetime games this year, and that supposedly is due to the fact that you need to earn those games, which I don't see how that makes any sense when the Jacksonville Jaguars have at least one, and they were a worse team than us. In my opinion, I think it has something to do with turning in the card for Aiden Hutchinson a little too quick. Turns out the Lions did the same thing with Panay Sewell last year. So I think it's got Roger Goodell feeling some type of way. Now, I don't want to make this channel an NFL narrative channel, but there is some narrative behind it. And I have been saying this for years that the Detroit Lions time will come. I believe that our time is now. I'm going to be honest with you. Every time we hear our team is something negative. And one of the reasons why I started this channel is because one, I don't know about you, but one thing that I hate more than anything else when it comes to the Detroit Lions is when people talk about our team and they're not fans of our team. Nobody understands but us what it is truly like to be a Lions fan. Players can understand more than these broadcasters, Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, all of these guys. Nobody understands. And I hate to hear other team fans talk about my team. They know nothing about my team. You know what you see on the surface. You don't know what the internal stuff is like. You don't know about that stuff. So it, it irks me. And that's one of the reasons that a long time ago, I started talking about the Detroit Lions. Outside of us, there's nobody that really talks about us in a realistic fashion. I've never been one of those guys to make up something for make up something's sake. It's always been, I've always tried to keep it real with you guys. It all started last year when I saw Roger Goodell at the stadium uh, before the first preseason game. I said, something is about to change. And I have receipts for all of this stuff. You can go back and, and listen. But our coach, our team is getting more exposure than we've ever had. I thought we were going to have two to three primetime games. Turns out that we have none. But that's okay because we will have a better year this year. The team as a whole will be 100% better, and our time is coming. Everybody is talking about Dan Campbell, and he went from being a joke to being respected. He cried on the podium. Real tears. Now, while some made mockeries of that, some appreciated it, and they, they understood that this guy cares about his team. That's something you could never say about Matt Patricia. Matt Patricia never would have showed that type of emotion. Dan Campbell played here. Yeah, he was on the injured reserve when the Detroit Lions went 0-16, and 16, but he knows what that feels like, right? So if anybody can bring this team to relevancy, it would be Dan Campbell. It's very odd to have our team in the national spotlight. It feels kind of weird, but I'll tell you what. When I went to California, in this video, sometimes you got to have just conversations. When I went to California to see the Detroit Lions play Matthew Stafford, I've said this many times before. I didn't hear a single Rams house or a single whose house the five days I was there. The only time I heard it was on was at the stadium, right? 
Now, California, beautiful place. Every day I had on Lions gear, this sweater. Got a little too hot, but I had this sweater on. And one of the every single day, you know what I heard? A go Lions. Every single day that I was there, at least one time at the mall, I, I told this story. So I went to the beach. Went to the beach. This is a couple days before the game. I go to the beach. Beautiful houses, expensive houses, and they their houses face the Pacific Ocean, right? So I'm walking. I get to the very last house. This guy has a kind of bluish awning, kind of blue, kind of, you know, it's, it's like a darker blue, blue chairs. Blue. I'm like, he could he be a Lions fan? I come around the corner where I can see him and his family sitting. They got on Lions gear. We chopped it up, talked about Matthew Stafford. I never got his name, but we chopped it up. Now, this guy lives in California, faces the ocean. Why would he be a Lions fan? Because the Lions have represented kind of being the underdog for a long time. And we've been the NFL underdog for quite some time. But our time is coming. That, sh- that is proof by the draft that we had. That is proof by the coach that we hired. The people falling in love with the Detroit Lions. We were a really bad team last year. We beat the Minnesota, but we never gave up. We beat the Minnesota Vikings. I was ready to give up. I was ready to be done. We beat the Minnesota Vikings. We got that. We celebrated like we won our first playoff game. The NFL, the media, they made fun of us for that, but we didn't care. We were not. People did not understand that we've been through the 0-16 season. We were the first team to go 0-16. We didn't want to be the first team to go 0-17. It was a joke that we were talking about. Then the Lions tie the Pittsburgh Steelers, still don't have a win. Now we're talking about the first team to go 0-16-1, which I promise you will never be replicated. So we've been through it all, and we were happy because real Lions fans understood that that got that monkey off our back. And what did we go and do? We wind up going 3-3 three and three at the end of the season. Every Lions fan knows about the blue Kool-Aid expression. The blue Kool-Aid expression, when, when, when the Lions fans say that they're drinking the Kool-Aid, it is this Kool-Aid that is filled with hope, the taste of hope, the taste of this team is going to be better, the taste of this year is the year we're going to do something, every single year. And there are stages that we go through. It happens all the time. Every Lions fan has, has taken a sip of the Kool-Aid every single year. Even when they say they don't want to, I've been guilty of it myself. But people who are not fans of the Detroit Lions are starting to get on that train as well. The Lions last year, and I know this is like, we at the end of the day, the team needs to win. Moral victories are not a thing, all right? But this team, they had a, a real Rocky Balboa quality last year. Now, Rocky's a fictional character, but Rocky, the metaphor of Rocky, the meaning behind Rocky is a big deal. It's so big, they got a statue of this guy in Pennsylvania. They have the Rocky movie saved in like the film hall of the 100 greatest movies, right? To be preserved because that's how big of a deal Rocky, the original Rocky is. And the Detroit Lions were straight up Rocky Balboa last year. That is what people noticed about our team. Now we have to get those into wins. We have to get those. And I'm going to tell you what, they are coming. They are coming. I personally believe that the Lions will go 9-8. and eight, And if they do, they make the playoffs. So leave it in the comments below. Why do you think that we are starting to get a lot of attention from the na- on the national scale? We've never had it like this before. Let me know why you think that is in the comments below. My name is Derek. This is Detroit Lions Syndicate. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're a returning viewer but haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. Sometimes you just got to have a conversation. They're good every now and then. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself. And as always, go Lions.